Welcome back, everyone. You might have seen my recent video on gene set enrichment analysis as presented by Broad Institute. We've had a video discussing the theory behind the program and a second video looking at how to use the program. What we haven't taken a look at is what's called leading edge analysis, which is also part of the gene set enrichment analysis program. So just so you have a review of what we're talking about when we say leading edge analysis. Um, let me refresh your memory on what a leading edge is. So what you see here is an enrichment plot provided by gene set enrichment analysis after it has compared a reference signature to a set of query genes. So just to review your memory, here we have the reference signature ranked from high expression to low expression. And here we have the hits for the genes in the gene set um, that correspond with their position on the reference signature. So you'll notice, um, as expected, that we have a bunch of genes that contribute to making the maximum enrichment score. So what I've done is I've kind of taken the maximum enrichment score and I've drawn a line down. And any of the black lines, aka genes in the Cori gene set, that are towards the left or between zero and the max are what we would consider the leading edge. Now those genes may have biological significance, but we need to take a look at that in a little closer detail. So let's take a look then at leading edge analysis. Within GSEA, we can load up the program, click on this. Now I've already gone ahead and loaded a particular gene set of interest. I'm just randomly picking this one that I ran earlier. Go ahead and load your GSCA results. Okay, there they are. And notice how you get multiple tabs. So you could have multiple um, data sets open. Now it's up to us to pick what we're going to look at. So for me, I like to take a look at the p-values that are going to be below uh, 0.05 are statistically significant. So you click your first one, and I'm noticing these are out of order, so why don't I save myself some time there. Okay, and let's see, right there. Now I'm using the shift to click in order to get them all. If I want to go individually, I can just hold the control button while I click. You get the idea. Once I've highlighted all the uh, query gene sets that I'm interested in analyzing, I'm going to go ahead and do run leading edge analysis. <clears throat> this may take a while depending on how many gene sets you are looking at. You cannot run leading edge analysis if you've only compared one gene set to the reference signature. So in this particular case, I was using C6, which is the oncology signatures um, that come from the uh, MSIG database from Broad Institute. Um, but at any rate, you get the idea. You need multiple Cori gene sets in one run to compare the leading edges between those Cori gene sets. So once the leading edge analysis is done, and in this case it went rather quickly, we can have four different ways to look at the data. So if I want to take a look at which genes within a particular um, Cori gene set have overlap, I take a look at this image right over here. And so this is a heat map that then looks at the gene to gene correlation and the darker red means that I have a lot of uh, strength. So for example it looks like I've got a BMIP2 gene um, and that is corresponding with this TBK1. So for example we're going to find that gene uh, highly enriched in that data set. As I said, we can then scroll through to see if we have overlap. So for example, this range of genes occurred in multiple gene sets, um, and so this may be particular genes of interest. I can also take a look at pathway to pathway comparison. So you notice I have a bunch of pathways along the top, and if I scroll over, I'm going to have a bunch of pathways, oops, sorry, wrong way, a bunch of pathways going towards the bottom. The idea is that you're going to end up with this kind of green color for pathways that have overlap. Now, of course, I have this green line because the E2F3 is going to be the E2F3. So you see how the two of them match each other in order to get a green line. So you should always get this green line here as 
gene sets on this axis correlate with the gene sets on this axis. But again, the idea is that we're going to just take a look and see if we have any overlap. A little bit of overlap here may be of interest. One of my personal favorites is down here, number of gene sets per gene. So if I zoomed in, <laughs> which if I had smaller data sets, life would be way, way, way easier. Okay, you would have lists of genes for every point here. And what you're looking for is the genes at this end because they have the maximum number in gene sets. So these would be the ones that overlap with the gene sets that you queried. And of course, since I only picked genes that, or sorry, gene sets that were statistically significant, um, these would be the genes that I would be most interested in. And of course, the Jacquard um, is another way that we can view the same type of information. So leading edge analysis is really handy if I want to take a look at what particular genes or gene sets are highly enriched amongst a large query gene set uh, file. And these might be more biologically relevant than if I didn't have these overlaps. So hopefully this is helpful for you to figure out how to run a leading edge analysis, what it is and what it's useful for. Look forward to your comments and have a great day.